Hello everyone, welcome back to Spiritual Astrology. I'm currently in the middle of filming my moon series, so uh, at this moment in time I'm almost done. I, I think a few days ago I uploaded my Capricorn moon video. Um, before I upload moon in Aquarius and moon in Pisces, which are beautiful placements, just like the rest, but you know, I actually know people with these placements, which is really good. But before that, I th there was, there's been a video, there's been energy, there's been um, a message that I've been wanting to put through. And not only are my videos important in the sense that, you know, I feel like I am meant to make these videos, you know, being an astrologer since I was eight years old, you know, I needed to integrate something into my life that made sense, that kind of uh, simplified and kind of just uh, <laughs> explained a lot of the things that I'm good at. So, you know, I could be like any other astrologer and explain that my birth chart um, is the reason or is an explanation as to why I am doing this. And this this is funny because I, f I truly feel like I could use my birth chart to explain why I make videos, why I have a, vlo a blog, uh, why I write articles, why I am very, very connected to spiritual astrology, the esoteric meaning behind things, why I feel like I should share this with the world. Um, but the fact that I have the, like, I feel the need to explain it or feel the need to basically justify my feelings or justify my actions is quite terrifying at this point in time for me to admit because it's funny when you kind of it's it's weird when you feel like you've grown up and you feel like you're learning and you f you just feel like there's nothing much else to learn and you're reached a certain age and then you start to see something in yourself that's like wow this is really who I am it's kind of like a point where you get to a point and maybe you know a lot of people speak about Saturn return and you kind of have to see something that's like, wow, I didn't see this happening. That's generally what I think people mean when they try to explain Saturn in return. Like when, when after 30, almost 30 years of your life, you generally, you know, in our society, we have quite a lot figured out. At one point in time, actually, not in recent history, 30 years old was a, an old age. People died not long after that. You know, they had their whole lives. A lot of people had children at 10 or 14. But at this point in our life, 30 is kind of like this just midpoint because, you know, most people have had children if they're if they're going to have any. Most people uh, have been, you know, got married. But we, we are at a, a changing point in history where marriage is kind of being seen differently. Commitment is being seen differently. And one of the main points in the video I wanted to make was the fact that Pluto is currently transiting through Capricorn. And I hate to make it sound like this is super important, but I'm going to... I've learned a lot recently about my self-expression. So I was born with Saturn and Mercury... Saturn conjunct Mercury conjunct the Sun. And this is very topical right now. It's an important thing for me to bring up, considering... This double conjunction, which means three planets together, which is a double conjunction. I used to say triple conjunction, but that would mean four planets. You know what I mean? But Pluto is is going through Capricorn, conjuncting these three planets, and it it would be an understatement to say that I've gone I've been going through a period of trial, and not only are these three planets. Uh, conjunct in my birth chart, but they are in my 12th house. So originally, what's funny, when, when I first looked at my chart not long ago, I, I noticed that these planets were in the 11th house. And I never really kind of questioned. It took me a long time to see, and this is kind of a funny thing, because I grew up, astrology was the one thing I knew. 
And as an astrologer, I tell people um, I go through one thing at a time. You know, I began looking at sun signs. I began, and then I and, and I really questioned it. I I saw sun signs in an objective way. Originally, actually, uh, my first astrology book that I personally got that was owned by me. I was eight years old at Christmas, I believe, and it was a Capricorn book because I'm a Capricorn sun. And I started to basically read that, oh, Capricorn doesn't get along with certain signs, you know, Gemini and Aries. And at this point in my life, that was very true. I was very much a Capricorn. I, I do believe that my rising sign didn't have any much time to kind of integrate. And I'm, you know, everyone has a different theory, rising versus the sun. And me being such a Capricorn, conjunct Mercury and Saturn, I want to find the core issue, especially now that Pluto is transiting. And although Saturn is, and you know, I'm going to get into this at the end of the video and continue on, but Saturn is viewed as this greater malefic. And the problem that I'm seeing you know, that I've seen throughout my life, and I'm sure Scorpios and Capricorns and Geminis go through this, is that they're just viewed as bad. And as soon as someone takes a sign and views a sign as bad, that automatically just basically, they just take, it's just this you versus me thing. So if, if someone doesn't like a certain sign, they just say, this is so bad. And I've consciously and, you know, methodically try to find ways to present my information in a non-biased, certain way. I only present any information that I know if I feel it, first of all, in my gut. So I am an instinctive person, which all Capricorns are. So if you're watching this, Capricorns, you know, they're viewed as very intellectual, maybe, maybe manipulative. But Capricorns are very instinctual. And I noticed this from, you know, you see it being a Capricorn, having Capricorn friends, getting to get comfortable with them, which is another thing, which is a whole other thing. And it's not because they're evil people, but because they have a, they have a guard up. They have walls they build up because of how sensitive Capricorns are. We're sensitive. And it's not in the same way that Cancers are. We're sensitive in such a different way. But going back, yes, when I was a kid as a Capricorn, I didn't get along with Aries and Gemini. And I had a cousin that was an Aries that I did not get along with. And it made sense because I didn't have time, in my opinion, to build up my rising sign. So, in my opinion, the sun is, you could say your core, and you know, words sometimes can fail us, and this is me as a Gemini moon, I'm very good with words, I'm very loquacious, I'm very, it's, you know, Mercury conjunct Saturn, it's, it's, it's perfecting, it's like, um, the ability to own in and object, like, objectively see something, so in my mind, I'm able to speak really well. And, it, and after, you know, I'm 20, almost 27, after this much time, I'm able to distinct, distinctly explain things in a way that very clearly reflect what I'm trying to get across. And for a long period as a Capricorn, this is where Capricorn's negative qualities do come in. So just to clarify, I was you know, unconsciously judgmental of people that weren't able to speak like I was. And, you know, it had a lot to do with the fact that I put pressure on myself. So this is, you know, the layers and layers of Capricorn, of course, right? And right now Pluto is going through Capricorn. So this is not just a necessarily, you know, a Mercury conjuncting, you know, the Capricorns out there, their sun. Or like, you know, Venus going out in Cap, like transiting Capricorn. And, it's and you know, it'll generally affect just the Capricorns out there. What's happening is... And usually when Venus conjuncts my sun, I tend to want to spend a lot of money. But when Pluto is moving through Capricorn, I'm noticing a lot of people breaking up. Uh, relationships kind of like destroying and not in a way that is just natural. It's in a sense that it's eroding. You know, Neptune erodes in a way that it's like we don't feel it. But Pluto, what I've, one recent thing that I read about Pluto is that it is very subtle, but it's intense and it's very strong. But anyway, I don't want to seem like I'm all over the place, um, but the malefics in, in astrology are not reflective of evil. In a person. So if someone is a Capricorn or Scorpio, this is not an evil energy. Um, 
we have to remember being a Capricorn, you know, I have been reflective on the Cancer Capricorn opposition. And yes, I did I do have issues with Capri with Cancer. I do not view them as evil. I do see Cancers as re they reflect some stuff that you see in Capricorn, just like Cancer reflects um Capricorn. And it's the same with Aries and Libra or any other opposition. The truth of the matter is that every sign a sun sign will have a core of its opposite inside of it, and also it'll have the sign before it in it. But these are these are things that the reason that you were born with your specific sun sign is that you feel uncomfortable, you generally with expressing the opposite sign and the sign before you, and that's where a lot of your inner shadow work has to do. You know, the seventh house, the twelfth house, have a lot to do with shadow work. And right now Pluto is on the cusp of my. 12th house. And that means it's on the cusp of a lot of my planets. It just went over my, um, well, Merc it only, Uranus and Neptune. I was born in 1990. And between 1998, 1988 and 1992, I'll say, there was a conjunction in Capricorn and, you know, moving into Aquarius of Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And... And now that Pluto's moving into Capricorn, it's affecting this generation. And you may not think that's a lot of people, but yes, it's it it reflects all of us because of how these people have affected our society. We are the adults right now. We're the ones that are supposed to be moving into the workforce, and there's a lot of issues with the workforce. And believe me, that has a lot to do with Capricorn. Capricorn is a very complex sign. Virgo Virgo rules uh, work, and that is a complex sign because you know Virgo and Capricorn do you know we have a tendency to repress emotional well-being in the sense that we don't like to lose ourselves in an emotional um, world. We don't have the, you know, I'll say earth signs except for Taurus aren't very emotionally intelligent. This is where cancer is, comes in. But the reason that cancer is so emotionally intelligent is because cancer is, you know, ruled by the moon and at, at its core it has that lesson of Capricorn. It doesn't feel guilty about being harsh. It doesn't have that guilt. So, you know, cut the bull crap about Capricorn being such a manipulative sign. I have never met a Capricorn that is capable of doing that. So I grew up as a child reading these astrology books and it constantly reinforcing in my mind that Capricorn, if you are a Capricorn, you're manipulative. You climb the social ladder. I have never met a Capricorn that is willing to do this. Capricorn in its essence is so anti-cutting corners. We know what's fair. Saturn is about equality. This needs to be, in my opinion, and you know, it can be my job. I'm not going to force it on someone else. I've been learning through Pluto to break down, you know, what structures me. Right now, Pluto's on my Saturn, and that is about structure and equality. It's about the structure and equality of society. And this is a complex thing. That's why Saturn, in esoteric astrology, rules over the crown chakra. And, you know, people are, always say it rules over the base chakra. And yes, in a sense, Saturn gives us our base but it rules the crown chakra because it is the end all be all of this third dimension. And, you know, that's a whole other subject is the fact that I met many more Capricorns, and it could be because they were born in the 90s, early 90s, whatever, that are spiritual. But no, I, I've even met, you know, people, Capricorns born in, you know, early 80s and the 70s. Capricorn is, an, is a very esoteric, deep sign. And right now, Pluto is transiting Capricorn, which has this, it's a goat with a fishtail. And that fishtail is the emotional complexity of society. You can view that right now. As Pluto's going through Capricorn, view that and view Capricorn as all the hidden, like, strains and all the hidden veins in the earth and all the, in, in society and in careers. You know, right now it's crumbling. Everyone, there's a huge, like, societal questioning and breaking down of why society is like this. You know, the little, there's a lot of tiny things all over the world, and people are, all over Facebook are saying 2016 was the worst year. 
you know, between 2012 and 2016, it's been, a lot, it's been coming and whatever, and, you know, spiritual people that, you know, tune into this energy can see what's happening. And you know what, I'm not, I'll be the first to admit that lately there's a lot of bull crap being said on these spiritual webs, like, groups on Facebook that I'm in. And I'm getting so pissed off and tired of it because it's all bullshit. And it's about time that the earth signs who are in tune intuitively with how society is, speak up about it. But ultimately, Saturn and Pluto get a really bad rap. And you know Mars too. Mars is the lesser malefic. But Mars and Pluto, and okay, in esoteric astrology, Mars and Pluto are not good. But Saturn is actually viewed as the mo the like the complete lesson for us because he humanity is so so young. And I don't base my videos on this very shallow thing. It's hard for me as a Capricorn to even admit because okay, first of all, having Saturn on my son, I'm not I'm not capable of being proud of anything. So Basically, this last few years, as Pluto moves over my planets, this huge mirror has fallen in front of me. And it's just basically like, oh, here's all the, the bad qualities that, that you've had to deal with your whole life that you haven't seen. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. So I, I'm, Capri I'm a Capricorn, so I've never been proud of myself. Oh, cool. Oh, that's the reason I went to school and got a bachelor's degree. Oh, and this is the reason why, well, I don't know the reason, the reason why that I can't find a job and why society is suffering and why everyone that's graduating right now is not able to find employment. Oh, this is why I got engaged and had to break it off. You know, these are things that Capricorn hates. Capricorn so desperately wants to cling to make something of their own, but generally in early life, especially as Pluto is moving through Capricorn, generally in early life, we don't want to um, kind of take things. It's really hard for us not to do things in a hard way. We have to make sure things are concrete. Otherwise, we, it's this, but it's fear. So then basically what Pluto, you know, has been telling anyone with any planet in Capricorn, it's saying any planet in Capricorn, first of all, is, you know, will have an element of fear. Capricorn is fear. And it's not anger, which is not a bad thing. See, beneath fear is weakness. Beneath anger is weakness. So generally, you know, Scorpios will have an anger to them, and that is weakness. But they're, they're more in touch with their emotions, you see. Capricorn energy isn't as much. But yeah, um, but the thing is right now, because Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, which is considered the wisest teacher of astrology, it's a breakdown of the highest, our highest truths. And what's happening is a lot of people are dealing with their fear, the fear that may be subconscious or that maybe we didn't realize was going on. But um, fear itself is usually kind of a reflection. Saturn is also a mirror in itself. So Pluto is, you know, might be mirroring and, you know, it's showing us all the bad qualities, but it's also breaking it down at the same time. It's destroying it to build up. But Saturn is exalted in Libra. And the reason why is because Libra, Capricorn, and Aquarius are the most objective signs. Uh, they have the ability, any of these placements in your birth chart or whatever, have the ability to reflect on... Um, kind of therapize, give you a therapy as to how to deal with any of this. And that's how I see anyone, you know, even planets in the 7th house, 10th house, and 11th house, or planets in Libra, Capricorn, Aquarius. It's a therapy. And that's Saturn. And then you get all the other planets that are going on right now. You know, Uranus, Neptune, all the generational planets are very strong right now they're they've been you know a few years ago we had that grand cross in the sky and then we had another one and then there was like some oppositions and trines and like all this crazy stuff that's going on now and it's trying to bring in this new stuff but yeah humanity has been <laughs> rejecting it 
So it's just basically all happening at, at the time it's supposed to happen. But Capricorn's harsh energy. So yeah, Pluto's coming through Capricorn and it's basically telling people with planets there to just deal with everything. But it's not this negative thing that people see. Capricorn itself is not evil because there's no, unless you call it evil. Calling something evil makes it evil and it's a good thing to call something evil. But when you, once, you, once you do that and there's an element that isn't evil associated with it, it'll reflect back on you. So what I'm, what I'm saying is that, yes, okay, before you look at another sign and you see Saturn or you see Pluto and you, or you see Scorpio or Capricorn or Gemini, these are signs that people generally don't have, you know, have issues with. Maybe because they outwardly reflect qualities that are harder to incorporate into ourselves. But 